Hi all, it's Amanda. Thanks for watching. So today I'm going to try doing a card kind of off the cuff. So this is a new, well new to me stamp set from Kindred Stamps called The Horror. It was from their vault release and I love it. It has all your classic uh, horror movie guys or your horror villains. So as soon as I got it, I had an idea for Pennywise. So if any of you have seen the It movies, um, the book was written by Stephen King. I'm going to play with this guy right here. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'll walk you through my uh, supplies and I'll link everything below. I usually use Bristol Smooth for my paper. The idea is I'm going to do a background with Distress Things in Twisted Citron, Wilted Violet, and Black Soot. I might add to that, but I'm not sure yet. Now this stamp has a lot of small images, so I'm going to color it in with my Zig markers. I'm going to play with these colors, and I'll link the ones I use in the bottom. So I haven't used this at all. It's the first time I'm opening the stamp set, so I'm kind of excited. And I'm going to try masking, which I kind of don't like, because honestly, I think it's a pain in the ass. So we're going to get my tape ready. This is just scotch masking tape. So what I'm going to do is, here's my mini Misty. This is what we're going to use today. Put everything to the side. So I'm going to actually stamp the image onto the paper, which I don't usually do. So here I'm going to take a piece of the masking tape. I'm just going to put it in my Misty. And this is how we're going to mask the image. Well, I'm going to try masking the image. We'll see how this works. This is totally off the cuff, people. I'll probably dropping stuff in the background. So I'm going to take the stamp. Now, I've already kind of looked at this, and it'll, it should fit on here. You can get uh, masking sheets, but sometimes the tape, I think, is a little bit better for smaller images. So I put the tape down, and I put my image down, and I'm going to mask it with... I'm going to ink it with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. So this is the ink I usually use for everything. It's a, a Copic safe and a watercolor safe. And that's why I'm going to use it with the zigs. So I did cheat and I looked up the different Pennywise clowns <laughs> to see what colors to try to use. I think my favorite uh, is the 1990 Pennywise. What do you guys think? I like the old one. So I don't even care how, like, how dark this has come out because this is just what I'm going to use as the mask. So that's already done. I'm going to take this off of here and I'm going to fussy cut this. I'm going to put this to the side. So yeah, I like the old one better. I don't know. I read the book. I'm just going to fussy cut this out. I try to save my pieces of tape that I don't need. I'm going to try to do the best of my ability to fussy cut this. When you're cutting, you want to move the paper and not so much the scissors. So yeah, I finished reading it when I was a senior in high school. And I remember finished, I, it was, it's like a thousand something long book. Like it's not a quick read and it honestly took me like freaking years to read the damn thing. Uh, so I read it literally. And I finished it and I'd already seen the 1990 m movie with John Ritter or some other known name. Oh, Tim Curry played Pennywise in that one. And I really like Tim Curry. So anyway, so I really, even though the 1990s one, if you haven't seen it yet, is kind of hokey. I mean, compared to today's movies, but honestly, the CGI shit, I get kind of annoyed with because it's just like too much it depends. Like, Game of Thrones CGI is fucking incredible, but, like, some of the new stuff, it's just... Like, I don't want it to be obvious, I guess. So there's my TV rant. So that's cut out. Oh, sorry, I'm trying... I tape these on my phone, and I'm still getting used to this. Forgive me. So the 1990s one wasn't as... It's a little hokey, but I like it better, and I think Tim Curry... I really like him. I think he did a good job. He's more scary. I don't know. The new one, it didn't follow the book at all, and I'm kind of picky with that. 
Like it did follow the book, but you know, not as well. So I'm gonna try to put this in the middle. I really don't wanna reline my stamp because I didn't wash my stamp chamois. So I'm gonna try to put this in the middle. And I'm not good at measuring. So I kind of just wing things. So I think that looks pretty good, right? All right, so we're gonna put this down and we're gonna ink it up. I like my images to be crisp. I really do. So I might ink this a few times. So I inked it up with my jet black ink and we're just gonna do this. Sorry about my elbow. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I have to move this up a bit. So if you don't have a Misty, like you really do need a stamp positioning tool. This is a game changer. Uh, acrylic blocks are nice, but honestly, I always screw up. An image comes out like blurred or doubled or something. Like if you don't get enough ink on, that's why the stamp positioning tools are really nice because you can just keep inking it up. Like I like this to be crisp. Why is that not working out? Hmm. What's with the balloon here? weird. So I'm going to gently redo this. Sometimes the magnets can be in the way, but I feel like maybe this just, maybe the stamp itself. Sometimes you get stamps that are not totally even with the rest of it, or it's like raised. There we go. It was the magnet. Okay. Wahoo. So that's stamped, and I'm going to remove the misty and get it out of the way. And I'll clean that later. All right, let's put this here. So now I'm going to take my mask, and this is great too because you can reuse this a few times. So I'm going to try to line this up as much as I can with my stamped image. See? So now I'm going to do some ink blending with this. So I'm going to try my Twisted Citron first. I kind of want this to be an airy look. I might add another color, but we'll see how this goes. And then I just have a post-it note so I can maneuver this. I was going to maybe use this masking stencil, but I'm like, eh. So I'm using my Tailored Expression blending brushes. Blending brushes are another game changer. I think because even though the foam tools I think are great, I personally just don't do well with them. Actually, no, let's see, I just changed my mind. <laughs> see? What did I tell you? I think I'm going to do... A bright yellow and then a twisted citron. Let's go with squeeze lemonade first. And I don't really wash these unless they get too gross, my blending tools. So I'm going to do a little yellow, and these are the dye inks, they're not the oxides. And then we're just going to go right over the image. Like I said, I'm doing this off the cuff, I haven't made this before. So anyway, I was a big Stephen King fan when I was a kid. <laughs> and this sounds really shitty, but I feel like when he got sober, his work wasn't as good. <laughs> Is that horrible? I don't know. Cujo was good. If, you, if you're not a Stephen King fan or if you haven't read his books, uh, Cujo... I feel like that's the most realistic. Like, I feel like that could maybe freaking happen in real life. It's about a rabid dog, pretty much. I'm like, yeah, I think that could happen. All right, so... Added the yellow. Now we're going to go in with the Twisted Citron. I made a mess. Ooh. Green. What's nice about the Tailored Expression brushes is that they're already uh, color-coded. Or they're already... You know, they're already colored. So you can go in and use them. I do have the Picket Fence brushes too, which I love because I love the sizes. Here's an example. Like I used this to do something recently, and that's a really little one. You can get into really some uh, small areas with that size brush. 
So I don't mask a lot. Um, there's different ways you can do it. You can use do what I did with the tape. I find it really time consuming, but I've seen other people's work with it and it's amazing. And I want this to be like bright but eerie too. I really like Twisted Citron as a Halloween color. Like the that color with a purple is pretty cool. And I've made a few cards with that. I'm going to turn this around a bit. I'm going to start using my post-it note. And post-it notes are nice because you can hold it. I mean, there's other things I could use too, but I'm just going to do that. Oops, I don't want to touch it. Deedly dee. So I think the 1990s movie might be on Netflix. I feel like you can access it now easier. I don't know. The new one is okay. Of course, I went to see both movies. Like they're just eh, I don't know. Just some things are a little crazy in it, but whatever. Okay. So now what I try to do when I'm ink blending is I try to go back in with the lighter color. So we're going to go back in with the squeeze lemonade. So I want this. See how that kind of pops a little bit? I don't worry so much about getting the color, like like the green on the yellow. I'm not worried about that. Okay, I think that's good. So now we're going to darken it up. So now I'm going to go in with the Wilted Violet. Open it. So I hope everyone's been doing good with this whole COVID crisis. It's never ending. I'm in the Northeast and it seems like we have our shit together, but <laughs> nice if some of the other states would get it together. Okay, so this is going to darken it up. So I want it to be, so this is my thought, I want it to be kind of an eerie look to it. And remember this is a mask, so we don't have to worry too much about the colors. And I might trim this down too, because I have been uh, adding my card base to a black base. So I will probably trim this a little bit. See, now that went in a little too much. I don't like how that's... So I'm going to have to go back in with the Twisted Citron for that. And just lighten that up. I checked the stamp set and it doesn't have anything about you'll float which I could probably try not in this video but like stamping that myself with some alphabet stamps all right I like how that's coming out but I have to watch I'm getting a little too uh <laughs> I don't want to come in too far like, I think that's far enough, right? I definitely think I'm going to do one with the Mike Myers one. That's awesome. If I was a good artist or I could draw, I would have this coming out of a drain. Like, have his head just come out of the drain. The sewer drain. So if you're not familiar with the show or the book, he lives in the sewer. Well, pretty much. <laughs> I think that'd be kind of cool. Alright, so I like how this looks. I'm going to do a little more over here. I 
So the markers I'm going to use, they're the Zig water markers, or the watercolor markers. So they're a water-based marker, and so they'll react with water. And you can dilute the color with the water. You can do a lot with them. I tend to use them more for smaller designs or smaller images to color. I usually use Copics. I'm trying to do more with watercolors. Okay. So now we're going to go back in with the Twisted Citron. Oh, that's cool. See? And the blended color we'll get from that might look kind of neat. That opens it up a little bit. And I kind of want that to be more around here. Like, I feel like I went in a little too close here. And if I want, I can even go back with the squeeze lemonade to lighten that up even more. See how that kind of, it's almost like a shadow effect. I kind of want this to match. I'm not too anal about stuff, but I do want it to kind of match. And now we're going to go in with black soot, which I don't have a black, hmm, I guess I'll use gray. Now I'm not loving how this is coming out, I'll admit that, I'm not loving that. So this I'm just doing the edges. I'm not going to come in. I want to come in enough so if I cut it down, there will be room. So I think I'm going to paint him or color him like the 1990s Pennywise. Like Mr. Tim Curry. So I just tap, just tap a little. Spin them around. See, I think again, it must be something on that angle. I keep going in too far. And now this side, I'm not getting enough. I think blending takes practice. I'm not the best at it, but these brushes definitely make it a lot easier. So I like this side. I like the left side compared to the right. I think the right is too much. So again, we're going to go back in with the Wilted Violet. I might go back in with the Squeeze Lemonade. I haven't done this, I think, with the black or the yellow. I usually do a purple and a twisted citron. 
I'm gonna leave this side. This side I'm not thrilled with. Huh. Oh well. All right, now I'm gonna go, hopefully last time, go back in with the squeezed lemonade. This has got to be lightened up here. I want this to be brighter. There we go. There we go. I think that's much better. All right, that is enough of that. So now we're gonna lift off the mask. You can use tweezers or sometimes I use my scissors. Let's see, here we go, let's add a little edge there. So. Woohoo! So now I'll put this little mask on the back of here, and then you can put it on your, keep it on your um, packaging, and you can reuse it. Okay? All right, so this is what we have for Mr. Pennywise. So what I might do after, maybe I'll do that now. So to fill in, See these spots? And this is another thing I don't like about masking, to be honest. <laughs> See these spots around here? If you don't get it exact, you're gonna have this little, this white space, which I don't like. So I'm gonna take my water pen, I'm gonna clean it on my chamois, which is a little, it's, I didn't rinse it, so it's all stiff. So I'm gonna take a little dab into my squeezed lemonade. See that? Just a little bit. I'm going to go around the edges here. For now. And it might lighten up the image too. And then what I could do is with one of my picket fence brushes, I can go in because it's really, uh, it's at an angle. Because I don't want to like remask it and move it down in case I get the image. This is why I'm not the best at masking. I think I got all those spots. Let's see if I can blend this out with the water too. All right. Okay. Okay. So his, this is the reds I'm looking at. This is carmine red. See that? 
Yeah, carmine red. And red. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna do the carmine red for his hair. So again, I'm gonna use my post-it note. I'm gonna try to be really careful. So these are the zigs, so the nibs are really tiny on this. See that? Yeah, really tiny, tiny. So that's why I tend to use these with smaller images. Now hopefully I won't fuck this up. I'm not going to go crazy with shading on this just because it's such a small, it's, the images are so small, I'm not going to go crazy with that. He has a lot of red aspects to him. The balloon is usually red. I'm standing while I do this, so I'm trying to get my head in the way. My craft table's tall. It's from Ikea. I think they discontinued it. I think they have a newer one. But it's actually a bar, bar table. Because I like to stand. I don't want to have to always be limited to sitting if I'm working. Okay. So that is the carmine red. I'm going to use the red red for his nose. And I'm going to use the red, I don't know if I should do this or not. It's got a lot of red under over the eyeball and some of the some of the pictures. I'll give him a little red eyeshadow there. And maybe some drops here, right? This image is tiny. So I'm not gonna use the water, the water to delete any to dilute anything. One thing I might do, I might add some Nouveau drops to that. That might be kind of cool. Now, because his face is white, I'm just going to go in with a real light blue. Check this. So what I do, too, on scrap paper or scrap... Yeah, scrap paper. I'll kind of... Here, so this is blue haze. I just want to see if I like that. Yeah, it's fine. So sometimes when you are you have an image that's completely white, like, say, a rabbit or a cloud or, I don't know, Santa or something... You can leave it white or kind of want to go in and give it like a little bit of a light blue outline. Ugh, I picked up some of the red. Where? Just so it kind of... Gives it some dimension. Actually, it makes things, uh, I'm picking up red, uh, makes things look whiter when you have a little bit of like a blue or a gray. Boy. No. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm not perfect, people. And maybe I'll do a little, well, a little bit on the teeth, just like a little, just a drop. Alright. I didn't look at his gloves. So the 1990 Pennywise had a yellow... Let me zoom in on this a little bit. He had a yellow... suit.
And it looked like he had like purple and blue stripes. So this color is light violet. Kind of goes with the wilted violet a little bit. like a bright blue. This is cobalt blue. Teeny tiny. I think it's good too that we also show when things don't come out the way we have planned. I don't think we should just show like things that came out perfect because you know we all you know we all play and it might not come out great but I think it's I think it's good to show that too not just the things we're really proud of I'm new to the whole video thing if you haven't figured that out yet so hmm go make his collar no we'll make the collar the yellow and that yellow sorry about that the yellow was yellow Yellow number 50. And then his feet. Mm, they should probably be black. Let's do a dark blue. I'll use cornflower blue. Do that red again for his buttons. Thinking about his gloves. I think that should be a gray color, no? Let's see. Gray. God damn, I'm good. Gray. Now the balloon. I feel like red, there's gonna be too much red in this, but. deep red. Here's a deep red. Number 260. Now this in comparison to the other reds, here's how these look. So we're gonna go with this one for the balloon. This I might actually, all right, I'll show you this. So I'm gonna put this dark spot here. Let's see how this comes out. I'm gonna use my water brush. I'm just gonna pull that out. I like how that came out. I'm 
Nice. Okay, I, I like that. <laughs> I like it. Do you like it? All right. That's looking a little too purple. I wonder if... So I'm going to try doing this. this. I clean my brush off. I'm just going to kind of... I want the red to come out. So that's the finished card base. Now I already pre-cut my card bases. I cut them out of a hundred pound cardstock. I cut them out when I'm getting low. So now what should we put for the sentiment on here? And what color should we do it in? So dreamy, you're a scream killer, I love you to pieces, happy Halloween, bloody, good birthday, sorry I bit your head off, you're fantastic, you're killing me, I love you mommy, I love you to death. I kind of want to put we all flow, but, or you'll float too. that in white or something. So I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to find some alphabet stamps and we're going to try doing that. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and this is what I've decided to do. I'm going to try to do the phrase, we all float. So if you've not seen the movie, I don't know if I'm going to ruin this for you, but he kind of lives in the sewer. <laughs> and his thing is, we all float down here. I really wish they had something like that on the stamp set. But whatever. So I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn. Deedly D, which one is this? Riley's ABCs. Now I don't really have any scary looking font <laughs> at all. That's okay. So if you can see this, I'm trying to make this, all right. So I'm trying to line up, and no, I'm not the best at this. I'm trying to line up the letters on the card so I kind of have an idea where it is, which I already do. So this is how I'm going to do this, and we're going to see if this comes out. I'm going to move this down a little more. So I'm going to say we all float. I was going to put you'll float too, because that's another thing he says. This is off. I'm going to try to put it here. This I'm not the best at. You're going to be like, why am I watching this chick? Yo, we, we all float. Now I'm going to see, all right, does that kind of look right? I'm trying to line it up on the grids. Float F, jeez. We all flow. Lots of L's in this. Actually, it's kind of, kind of working. Another L. Shit, I already used it, all the L's. Oh, good lord. Alright, so... Actually, I'm going to take this L and I'll put this here. Oh, that's why that wasn't working. Jeez. So some of the, the alphabet stamps, they give you a couple letters of the same, like stamps of the same letter. All right, F-L-O. So I'm taking the L from the all, because I know I can just space that back in. All right. You know, this is painful, huh? <laughs> All right. F L O A T. We all float. All right, one more, and we can get the stamps. So I'm going to stamp it with embossing ink, and then we're going to 
Keith said it. I think I want to do it in white. So I think that'll show up the best. And I need room to put the other L. Okay, so before you want to emboss, you want to use a powder tool. And this, it's, well, it's an anti-static tool because this, you don't want your embossing powder to be, ooh, that's like leaking. Uh-oh. It's going to do a really good job. Probably stabbed it with one of my uh, scissors. So I'm going to use the WOW embossing pad. This is a really slow drying embossing pad. So let me line this up first. I'm rushing, sorry. Okay, this needs to go down just a tad. That's something to look up for Halloween, like a scary font. I don't know. I know Tim Holtz has some dyes. Let's look that up. Thinking out loud. It's a little too low. All right, this is why I don't do this often because you little. Tedious. If I used a ruler, it'd probably help, right? All right. So I'm gonna ink this up. Do do do. All right. Now, can't forget the other A, so I'm going to clean these off. Okay. I'm going to remove these and just put them aside for now. It's going to be fun putting those back. I'm going to take the other L and I'm going to line it up next to the all. The other L. <laughs> to make the all. I'm just going to stamp that. All right. All right. Now, can we see this? I think you can. can oh, sorry. Kind of see that off camera. So now, I think white embossing powder would be good. I use coffee filters, and I honestly, I'll use the same one for other, for different colors. I just make sure it's off of it pretty good. You know, the remaining isn't in here. Okay. I was like, no, don't tell me, it didn't work. So now C on top here. So apparently I didn't do a good job with my static tool. I'm gonna flick it. There we go. Or you could use a dry brush. So I'm gonna go off to the side and I'm gonna heat emboss this and I'll be right back. And there is the finished wording. So it's not completely even, but for me, that's not bad. <laughs> not bad. So now do we want to embellish this with some 
some Nouveau drops or something, like with red. So this is how I do this. I just fold the coffee filter in half. Just kind of wiggle it around. There's hardly anything left. So I just put that to the side. There's some on there's some on my glass mat. So with that, what I find that helps with that is I take some of my tape. So this is the tape from earlier. You can see this. Yeah, see that mess? So we're just gonna do this. I just use tape. And it's all picked up. Wahoo. Garbage. Try to be pretty, pretty uh, environmentally friendly too. All right. So what I have a tendency of doing is if I decorate this with, with uh, like a Nouveau drop, sometimes I'll do it before I put it on the card and then that's a pain because you gotta wait for the card to dry. So I'm just gonna use my Scotch tape my permanent tape. In the back we got some of the ink, that's okay. So I usually use a tape runner to do this. I want to line it up. I'm not going to cut it down. I like it how it is. Now I suck at measuring. But I, I don't know what the hell the problem is. All my card bases, like, nothing ever lines up right. So I'm sure it's me fucking up. But it's just, it's frustrating. Oh, and you can see a little bit of that here. So what I should have did was, which I'll do now, because I forgot, I should have wiped this up because we, we ink blended right on the surface, and I didn't wipe this up first. So, <laughs> note to self. Wahoo! So now I'm not going to put that down on there. I'll put it down on something else. Okay. So, maybe to embellish this, let's see what I have for red. And we'll do the, the glue pen. I don't know if you can, really can see this. I keep my, I got these on scrapbook.com. I keep all my like Nouveau drops and my other drops, stickles in this container and they adhere to each other. So I think we'll try, what is this called? I'm not seeing the color. Not seeing the color. Hmm. Actually, you know what? We're going to do another one. We'll do the stickles. It's a little glittery. Oh, this is actually a Christmas. <laughs> Christmas red. Wahoo. So for this, I'm just going to put a little, little bit. Maybe some next to here. I don't know, I like to put them near the sentiment. Actually, I think I'll fill it in. I'll fill this in with the uh, buttons, how about that? So you wanna slowly like pull it up when you're done. And then we'll just let that dry. Now before we go, okay, I like using the 10 millimeter jelly roll from Sakura. I, I like this one. So I'm just going to go in and do a few little highlights. Now I should have done this before the other thing. That's okay. 
So on the balloon here, just do a little bit. That's all you need. I'm still kind of learning this too as we go. So maybe a little bit on the boot, on the shoes. I'm not going to see it too much on the yellow. Maybe put like a little on his eyeball, make him look even creepier. Just a little detail. You don't need a lot. Sometimes I go overboard. So maybe a little bit. You can do dots too. It's like a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe a little on the nose too. Ready? Boop. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Sorry that took so long, but I hope it inspired you to make something or just to learn some different techniques. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you're being safe and having a great summer. Thanks guys.